Hi, Bill Vales here. I'm here today with Tony DeAngelis. We're uh, um, going through the fossil record, right? Uh, among other things, and uh, uh, actually, what we've been doing uh, is putting some structure around fossils when they occurred in the geologic time span. Right. And other events that occurred uh, during uh, uh, the history of the Earth, uh, ra rather than just saying, here's a fossil, here's a fossil, here's right. a fossil, sure. which in and of themselves are very interesting to look at, mm -hmm. um, but ha having a little framework to, um, to think about when things occurred, I, I think makes a lot of sense. Oh, it does. Very, very, uh, very useful to trying to understand what went on. Now, as you mentioned, Tony, uh, we're talking uh, 4.6 billion years of Earth history. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we started in the Precambrian 4.6 billion years ago, right? And uh, we we mentioned that the uh, geologic time scale has been laid out based on various events that mm -hmm. scientists have found over time right. that um, occurred, different uh, species that have been found, mm -hmm. uh, locations where those species were found, um, different orientation mm -hmm. of the continents. Right. Definitely. Through, through um, plate tectonics. Through, through right. plate tectonics, which is really a very, very important concept that I think we always need to keep in mind, mm -hmm. okay, when we're talking about uh, anything with geology. Right. Uh, plate tectonics. Uh, okay, so we got as far as the Solarian period. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is in the Paleozoic era. Right. Okay. Just in the middle and, of it. And, and I should mention that Precambrian, and maybe you should mention this, that even though Precambrian has the smallest amount of space on this chart. Oh, it's far and away the biggest stretch of time. It's the biggest stretch yeah, of time. It's eighty-eight percent of, of the uh, the total time that Earth has existed. 88% was Precambrian. Okay, so 88% of the 4.6 billion years right. of Earth history is in the Precambrian. Yeah. Okay. Right. But life was extremely simple then. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if it even existed right. As, we, right. as we know it. I mean, at best it was a uh, single cell. But you did have some fossils that, that, um, and, and and some artifacts that that were relevant. Yeah, right. To, to each of those periods and what was going on mm -hmm. in that period. Okay, so we're going to pick this up now in the Solarian period, which is about mid Paleozoic era. Right. Era being the larger. Yeah, the larger division. The larger division, and now we're in the Solarian um, uh, period. And uh, and at that time, everything was still marine, you have to realize. Okay, marine life. Yep, and uh, I don't think plants had made it on there. And I have some examples here of, of stuff that is called graveyard, just for seabed, just for want of a better word. Graveyard. And it's very interesting because it's all kinds of, of uh, mixed fossils. I mean, you have some that have, I have one that has a little gastropod in it and palesopod and brachiopod shells and uh, 
crinoid stems in great profusion because there were so many of them. So the, the graveyard stuff is great because with the little hand loop, you can you know really study this stuff and look at so much, um, and it gives you an inkling into what's there, the bivalves and the uh, crinoid stems, and uh, you have bryozoans, uh, coral pieces. Um, this is loaded. Oh yeah, and this is another smaller one that has very similar properties. It's just chock this, full of stuff. This this is loaded. Um, uh, oh, I see all the crinoid right. uh, uh, pieces. Now, we talked about crinoids back here in the solarium, mm -hmm. uh, and that being the right. top part yes. of the uh, crinoid. But what I'm seeing here are as if slices have been taken taken from this. And Well, a lot of it, what it, it is, is uh, if you look at this one, the stem is segmented it yes. is. and these segments break apart so you have a whole lot of those uh, littering the sea floor. Wow, this is uh, very interesting. It's, it's very interesting to note that uh, this small magnification of about maybe 10 power mm -hmm. uh, is a great tool. It is. For when you're in the field. This oh, is yeah. really all you need. Yeah, you can't bring a microscope into the field right. and do anything with it. Right. So these, these come great. in very handy. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and and these are relatively inexpensive. Yeah, right. You know, a few dollars. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we have some um, yep. graveyard examples of the... Um, of the Devonian, right? Okay, and and some of this graveyard. Oh yeah, overlap. You know, over, overlaps these uh, mm -hmm. areas, but it uh, overlaps these eras. Uh, uh, Period. Periods. Let's okay. use the right terminology. Periods, um, and it's interesting to note that when a particular species is no longer found. Yeah, that's probably due to an extinction event. It's probably due to an extinction event. And it also helps us determine the boundary of each of these. Right, well that's it. Areas. That's how some of the indexing is done. Now, in the uh, Silurian to the Devonian are both considered uh, the zenith of the age of fishes, mm -hmm. to put it into some kind of context. There were mm -hmm. a lot of fishes coming out bony and uh, even, uh, you know, non-bony uh, non fishes, but they really uh, hit their zenith then. And during the Devonian is when land plants started to appear. And they were the cycads and ferns and stuff, and they were pretty primitive. But once, you know, you get past the Devonian and into the uh, carbon, then you get into the Carboniferous, which is where the big profusion of plants mm -hmm. occurred. And the Carboniferous is where all of our coal comes from, yes. basically. Yes. And we discussed that before as the transition from, you know, the forest uh, stuff dying and forming beds of, uh, of plant material and then later turning into peat and then into lignite and then bituminous and finally anthracite yeah, coal. Very cool. And uh, it's interesting to note here, and again, this is shown really nicely on this chart, mm -hmm. that uh, when we look at uh, any of these periods, the Devonian or Carboniferous, mm -hmm. which we're talking about now, but we should look over at the orientation of the land masses. Yes, exactly. You know, that have been in the positions that they are now in, again, based on plate tectonics, right. the forces of plate tectonics moving moving the uh, land masses around, we see here the North Pole, as we think of it, mm -hmm. has really shrunk in size, although it's a little bit bigger, actually, mm -hmm. than it was in the uh, Devonian, in the, in the Carboniferous. Mm. And we see... That's where you got Gondwana. Gondwana. Supercontinent. And Laurentia. Okay. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and that was the orientation of that. So, in the in the Carboniferous, it's just such an interesting artist depiction yeah, that they is. can put together mm -hmm. of um, 
the, the, the profusion of, of life at this time. And right, and in the Carboniferous, as uh, the first, um, once the plants sprung up, you had your first uh, appearance of, uh, of land life in the form of insects, and that's when they had the three-foot, uh, you know, wingspan dragonflies, mm -hmm. and these uh, centipedes that were, you know, six feet long and giant cockroaches and stuff. Yeah, so they, it was a kind of a strange time. Yeah, a great place to uh, see the results of, um, not the results, but to see some of this um, uh, land as it was is in uh, Joggins in, in Nova Scotia. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, would you... Um, have any samples of fossils that would fit into the carboniferous? Well, I have a whole selection of plant fossils here, and uh, many of them, they're almost all ferns, but I wanted to show you this one because it harkens back to the one you had, which was a nodule. And uh, when it was split, there was a nice fern inside. So here's a uh, beautiful fern. I think that's a Pectopterus, if I remember right. Beautiful fern fossil. There we go. Yep. I have a there. little calamites stem, just a okay. tiny piece. Uh, there's a calamites, and we can see the ribbing on the on the side of the calamites. Now I have a calamite. Oh, do you? I know. Let me. Uh, <laughs> I've collected up at Joggins when mm -hmm. when you were able to. You you can't now, but this is a Calamites. That's gorgeous. That was collected mm -hmm. up at Joggins or in the in, in the yeah. area of Joggins. It, it used to be that you could not dig in the cliffs, but anything that eroded from the cliffs you were allowed to pick up. But mm -hmm. um, they've since terminated that. Yeah. Although other other fossil sites do allow you to still pick up what's eroding out of the cliffs. And often time, digging in the cliffs is very dangerous. Oh yeah, I mean, you never yeah. know what could come down, right? But you can see on this Calamites, no good sense of that. Now I happen to have from Joggins, and this I, uh, uh, got at our Christmas swap at our rock meet. A friend of ours lives in um, Nova Scotia. I actually have a tree trunk. Whoa, <laughs> man, that is, this is pretty heavy. Yeah, that is an incredible piece. It's showing the back structure and everything. Yeah. And this is a uh, Lepidodendron, I Lepidodendron. believe. Lepidodendron. Mm -hmm. Okay. The interesting part of it is the, uh, the yeah the bark uh, the, showing the bark showing on that side, and that's fossilized. I won't put this on the no. Uh, it's a little big. Sharp. That's nice. That it's a little, a little big. And then I have that also fits into the. I have what looks like a lepidodendron in a lepidodendron. Mm, yes, right. Which this two kind of neat, from yeah. Joggins. That's a real neat one. Let's see the end of that. Mm -hmm. there. Well, we see here... Yep, so I get this thing here that's a little, I think it's Sigillaria back. Oh, look at that. Oh. A what? Sigillaria. Sigillaria. Yeah. And I think this bark. is this look little that piece of bark there. This, yeah, that's, if you can, that's mostly coal shale is what it is. So it yeah. shows you how a lot of these deposits are found in you know, coal-bearing or coal-related uh, rock. And this little sandstone here, this is an annularia, so it shows a little 
drawn. Oh, oh, look at the uh, detail. Yeah, there. so that's kind of, you know, that's where the, the use of the hand lens comes in. Angularia. And it's just real nice. You know what I find uh, collecting? That when, when you're collecting, you, you find a piece and you say, oh, that looks great. Mm -hmm. And you say, I wonder what's under it. Yeah. And you're sort of torn between do I destroy I know, do yes. I risk destroying what's here? Yeah, and that that I you know, so you need to know uh, uh, when to stop. Right. If yeah, you have it, something nice you don't go destroying it yeah. to look for another bedding plane. Yeah. Um, but it is tempting, you can see the bedding oh, yeah. planes mm -hmm. in there. But um, Yeah, but I just thought some of these are interesting little little items. So what's interesting here is that um, as, we're, as we're the formation of the continents where we now have Gondwana and Laurentia mm -hmm. and, and this by the way is significant for our Littleton viewers because at that time Littleton was off the coast of Gondwana and Gondwana uh, is uh, the prototype Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and Littleton was in a microcontinent that eventually welded up to um, um, Laurentia, which is here. So as we march towards the present, we're still a long oh, yeah. way away. Mm -hmm. We now see, um, here we are in the Permian, and we have, is that Pangea? Uh, yeah. Okay, so we have Pangea forming. So now Gondwana and Laurentia have moved together mm -hmm. under the force of right tectonic plate tectonics, yeah. which is the driving concept mm -hmm. through all of this. Yeah, um, because we still have a very active planet yeah, internally. Yeah, and, and and plate tectonics is controlling our uh, or, or strongly influencing our atmosphere, mm -hmm. our climate, the salinity of the ocean, yep. the depth of the oceans, the um, the ice caps. Oh yeah, everything. Um, yeah. It, so plate tectonics. I can't stress enough that plate tectonics is a um, uh, the the driving concept. So here we are at the Permian, and um, we now have Pangea, and um, we're, there's no dinosaurs yet. No, but the uh, uh, Permian was known basically as the age of amphibians into the Triassic, but uh, um, the Permian was mostly uh, marine life, but you did have amphibians coming out of the sea and onto the shore mm. and so that was the very beginnings of uh, the reptile. Yeah. And I notice here uh, that uh, in this chart that it shows that in the Permian we had a lot of foraminifera, right. which are very small um, yeah. um, uh, like brachiopod, well more like an ammonite yeah. in, 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 in how they look. But we do have some brachiopods here. I right. think I have a brachio... Oh, I happen to have a brachiopod Good. right here. That's in Matrix. Oh, in Matrix. That's nice. Mm -hmm. That um, um, Somebody gave me this at the Worcester Mineral Show. Oh, wow. Um, one, of the, one of the people... Um, frankly, has gotten overloaded with collecting I things, see. if you can relate to that. Yes, I can, yeah. actually. Yeah. But this is a brachiopod, which, and, and, and brachiopods occurred. Well, they came, uh, there were even some back to, into the uh, Silurian, yeah. And, you know, but they, they hit their height, I think, in the, around the, you know, Silurian to uh, Permian period. There were a lot of them. And you had coiled ammonites, you had the gastropods, uh, you had all kinds of stuff. Coiled ammonite? Yeah, to have a coiled okay, ammonite. well that fits right in up there. Right there. Yeah. I 
this example of a coiled ammonite. Mm -hmm. That fits there. And a few more small ammonites. The ammonites came in a variety of sizes, shapes, different species. Mm -hmm. And of course, some collectors do polish their right, sure, right. ammonites, and that, these have right. been fossilized and uh, some sort of um, replacement of minerals. Makes a beautiful example. And I know you know I don't have any here, but I know you have uh, small fish fossils, which would also go in there, fit in there nicely. I do. Uh, it. it uh, I have some fish fossils there. The probably my best <coughs> fish fish fossil um, I won't be able to place um, until several months from now because it's actually up in oh, the okay. Cenozoic, yeah. which mm -hmm. is going to be way, way up, there. up there. Right. So here we are at the Permian and life is just proliferating. I mean, oh, it's moving, lot. yeah. And a major event happens. You want to talk about what happened in the... Uh, Permian. Okay, the Permian um, was an extinction event, and there's still debate about what was the cause, whether it was an asteroid impact, it could have been extreme volcanism, it could have been a combination, but I believe it was the Permian that was the largest extinction event, where it wiped out um, most of the animal, or well, almost all the what uh, was living on land, and a whole lot of what was in the sea, and I think that's the one where they said over 90% of all species were just white from yes. the face of the earth. Yeah, so a lot of the diversification that had yeah. occurred prior to that right. was gone. Yeah, but in, in the same sense, it also gave the, uh, it getting rid of a lot of the dominant species gave others a chance to rise. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's all sorts of things, I mean, you know, some scientists now are saying it could have been an exploding star that wasn't too far away, a gamma ray burst. Mm -hmm. You know, there's more and more stuff from cosmology that are, that's entering the picture these days. So you just don't know. But there is uh, the extinction event is, is a given, and that's what ended that one, uh, um, that period. And then from there, into the tri, uh, you enter into the Triassic, and that's where the uh, you start with the age of. Uh, Reptiles. You have any amphibians and reptiles starting their march uh, to ascension. Mm -hmm. And um, and of course, the age of reptiles. That's what. Yeah. You know, that's the. You know, those are the dinosaurs. Yeah, the culmination yeah. of yeah, everything is the dinosaur uh, era. Uh, uh, that's the dinosaurs. And uh, again, keeping our eye. You know, when you think about all this, all these different life forms now, and what's going on in the world. Keep in mind the position of the continents, where the continents were, what role is plate tectonics playing in the uh, life that's, that, that's arising and uh, uh, the climate, the atmosphere. Think about where the, where right, the, right. Um, uh, where the uh, continents are. I mean, are by then, you know, you had pretty much oxygen-rich atmosphere because starting with uh, way back when the first plants appeared, even before that, you know, the blue-green algae and stuff uh, that were in the waters were producing oxygen. And so as the, uh, you know, it was a combination of fighting the, uh, the volcanoes, putting acidic and uh, toxic stuff into yeah. there, but the plants helping to, to produce great uh, quantities of oxygen. So that helped, uh, the, you know, the uh, land-breathing animals arise. Yeah. Whenever uh, Carol and I are driving back from uh, um, in the south in, 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 in Tennessee, whenever, whenever we go through Connecticut, uh -huh. um, I can always see Carol's eyes rolls when I say, oh, there's the beautiful Triassic red beds uh -huh. uh, when we get into uh, Connecticut. Because what happened there through plate tectonics is the plates were actually trying to spread apart at that time okay. in the Connecticut River Valley. Uh -huh. And it was a failed spreading zone, but oh, some okay. stretching occurred, mm -hmm. okay, and it failed. But through that stretching, 
it exposed a lot of uh, uh, sandstone, uh, iron-rich sandstone that has been colored red. Oh, okay. Sure. And it's um, it's just beautiful rock, and it uh, also uh, 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 bears a lot of um, fossil footprints. Okay. Of, oh, right. Of, right. Um, of uh, uh, dinosaurs in the Triassic and Jurassic mm -hmm. uh, periods that we see in Hadley, Massachusetts. Okay, and, right. And out in that area along the uh, uh, Connecticut River. So, um, uh, I don't have um, any uh, Triassic, um, I don't have a Brontosaurus with me, no. you know, or, or anything like that. But as we go up to the Jurassic, and again noting, you know, the uh, the yeah, right. uh, formation of the continents, I know one of the um, big things in the in the uh, Jurassic was the dinosaurs. The dinosaurs. And yep, they started their ascension basically in the Jurassic and into the Cretaceous. Yes. And here we have an example of the uh, Tyrannosaurus rex. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And this depiction of the Tyrannosaurus rex is far different than the T Rex would have been depicted in 1920. Right. When Charles Knight was doing his drawings, they had depicted them uh, more erect and dragging their tails and everything. And that's where the trace fossils or lack thereof come in. When they found tracks of the T-Rex, uh, there were no tail marks in there. So that showed that for them not to have a tail mark, they had to carry the tail up. Yes. And so that's when they came up with this new depiction that the hip bone would still support the animal if you were uh, lurched forward the way they show it. Mm -hmm. And this is a rather nice sculpt of how he would have looked. And then, yeah. Dr. Uh, Robert Bacher, uh, uh, an absolute character, um, and I forget what school uh, he did his work at. He did a lot of studying of um, uh, dinosaur trackways uh -huh. and uh, applied a lot of physics and uh, science to the trackways. Oh, right. Know, like in spacing and Yeah, stuff yeah. And understanding the stuff. spacing, determining the gait, mm -hmm. um, from that being able to get some sense of speed. Right. Um, and um, I know of all the trackways that we looked at when we were out, out in Hadley, uh, Massachusetts, you didn't see any tails. Right. You know, and that's not to say that the tails, uh, 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 tail marks may have been eroded away or whatnot, but um, um, uh, it, it was interesting to see all the all the work done on trackways there. All right now, I'm gonna. Well, I don't want to block that, so I'm gonna put this guy right here. <laughs> okay. Okay. And what is interesting to show is this, which is from the Jurassic as well. No, Cretaceous. Uh, uh, Cretaceous. Yeah. The, uh, T. Rex was Cretaceous. Allosaurus was in the Jurassic. But yeah. the T. Rex was in the Cretaceous. So, do you mean Jurassic Park? That was Hollywood taking. That was, yep. That, that should that, that should have been an Allosaurus, but yeah. not a T. Rex. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That but Cretaceous Park just didn't have the grab of Jurassic. Yeah, Park. you're right. Uh, this is a cast. Yes, a cast from an actual tooth of a T. Rex. Of a T. Rex. Okay. So it's to scale. It's taken from an actual one. So. It's not someone put something together and, and sculpted it. That is what uh, an actual tooth looked like from one of these. Okay, so we're going to place this in the Cretaceous, mm -hmm. not to be confused with Jurassic. That's right. In this, Jurassic, we're yep. We're going to put it in the Cretaceous. Yeah. Okay. Now, if I had a Brontosaurus or Apatosaurus, whichever they they name it now, that would be into the uh, Jurassic. And Allosaurus as well, Stegosaurus, some of the armored dinosaurs. Yeah, and the Gigantosaurus, is that a, um, I've heard names going back and forth. There's all kinds the of them. Uh, oh. There's uh, one that's, uh, I heard of several. 
the Ultrasaurus, the Supersaurus, the Seismosaurus. Yeah. You know, and those are all giant sauropods. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they overlap or not. Mm -hmm. It's kind of gets kind of complicated because every time they find a new one, they're not sure if it's a different animal of the same one, like a juvenile, <coughs> excuse me, versus an adult or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, we notice here as we're into the Cretaceous mm -hmm. that the <coughs> that excuse the me position of the continents is now starting to look familiar. Right, yeah, to us. they were, okay. were being morphed, right. Okay, now starting to look familiar that we see South America and Africa are, are separate. Right. Okay, we can see the shape of those. We see Australia a little bit down towards the South Pole. Yeah. But it's moving, right, moving up. And it's interesting to note that if we go back a little bit um, into the Jurassic, where we had Gondwana, mm -hmm. which was um, the proto-South America and Africa together, right. mm -hmm. that a particular species of animal may have been both in all through Gondwana. And, yeah, that and that's why as they, the continents spread apart, yeah, you find fossils for both. You find which, fossils, yeah, for which both. is part of the uh, you know the evidence to show what had happened, you know, which is a great thing. Well, we're um, we're in the Cretaceous, and um, we kind of uh, scooted right through there, and I think at this point we're gonna end this discussion here which which leaves us at the Cenozoic okay okay which leaves us at the boundary of the Cenozoic well actually we didn't talk about the extinction event of the dinosaurs oh true that, can that's true do that or do we have time for um, that one this one or not we um, we should leave the dinosaurs alive. Okay, and then on the next one... We're going we're to leave the dinosaurs alive All right. for this show. We're going to talk about, um, on the next show, uh, that, that extinction event. And mm -hmm. you have uh, some great examples of, um, of the evidence. Yes. Mm -hmm. Of the evidence uh, that uh, is used. And uh, that's a big topic. All these are big time. Oh, they are. If you wanted to get into them, I mean, you could do an hour show on, on each individual thing. Yeah. You know, it, it, uh, it is so broad. But giving an overview is still pretty fascinating, I think, to people. Get them interested, and then they can follow up on their own as far as, you know, investigating and reading and seeing what they think is, you know, interesting. So we're going to uh, uh, call this show a wrap. We're going to uh, leave the dinosaurs alive, and the Great. next show we're going to dust them off. Yep. And we're finally then going to enter the Cenozoic and, and hopefully the more recent Ice Age, which right. is going to alter our chart a little more yes. in terms of the gradations right. that we're going to add to it. But at this point, um, thanks very much for this. Yeah, very welcome. Okay, and I hope you all... Um, found this informative. I find it absolutely fascinating and uh, we'll look for you next time on Littleton Rocks. Mm -hmm.